Hello, and welcome to part two of this Tekka tutorial. Today we'll be learning how to make wrenches, uh, upgrading our furnace so that we can produce things faster, create a battery box which is able to store electricity, and a few of the machines like an extractor and a compressor. So let's get started. Um, first of all, we'll need to make some bronze dust. Now bronze dust is made by combining three copper dust with one tin dust. Now you can get the dust just by using the macerator on copper and tin ore and you'll get a couple of dust. So to make a wrench we'll need six bronze dust which is made by using nine copper dust and three tin dust in this pattern. Once you've got the bronze dust you just need to smelt it into bronze bars. Once you've got your bronze bars if you make a fork shape you'll end up with a wrench. Now the wrench is very important in in Tekkit because if you don't have a wrench and you want to move a machine block or uh, a machine around then it will just break. You have to use a wrench to smash it otherwise it will just turn into a machine block and then you have to start all over again. Next we're going to make an iron furnace which is slightly better than a normal furnace but not majorly better so to make an iron furnace you just same shape as a normal furnace but with iron ingots instead. And once you've got your iron furnace, we can then upgrade it further into an electric furnace, which uses the iron furnace in its recipe. So you just need a couple of redstone and an electronic circuit, which is a refined iron, six cables and two extra redstone. So if you if you don't know how to make it, go back and check the previous video, there'll be a link in the description at the bottom, and that, that shows you how to make these. And after a while, you'll just learn how to make these, because you make thousands of them. Pretty much every machine you ever make has one. So I'll take this with us. So next we're going to make a battery box or a bat box for short. Now in the last episode we made a generator and this produces electrical energy that can be used in your machines. But the thing is what happens if you don't want to use your machines all this time and you don't want it just to be sitting there doing nothing. You want to create like an accumulation of energy that you can just expend whenever you want. So what you can do is you can make this battery box. And it's just really simple. A couple of batteries, one cable, and five five planks of wood, and you get your battery box. Uh, batteries are just made with four tin ingots, two redstone, and a cable on the top. Um, I'll be showing you. I'll be once once I've got through all the recipes and everything, I'll show you how to set them up and how to use them effectively, and give you like a little look at my workstation as it was. So the next thing is the extractor. Now the extractor is very useful. If you've say set up a rubber tree farm and you find that for some reason the rubber trees aren't producing rubber anymore you can chop them down, get all the saplings off them, plant a new one, wait for that to grow etc. Uh, but with the wood, instead of using it for building materials or whatever, you can extract rubber straight from the tree, from the wood. Uh, it won't give you resin, it'll give you rubber, so it's already like it's been smelted already, which is brilliant. So you need a couple of tree taps, which is like uh, planks of wood in a, a tap shape. A machine block, which is refined iron in the shape of like a furnace or a chest. And an electronic circuit like I described before. And finally, a compressor. Now the compressor is not too useful until way later on when you have to compress uh, various metals into metal blocks which we'll get on to way later in this tutorial series but for, for the moment I'll, I'll give you a brief demonstration on what it can do so it's just smooth stone so you have to smelt some stone blocks up uh, machine block and electronic circuit so now that we've got all these we'll head over to the workstation as you can see I've got my rubber tree farm over there uh, where you can just quickly go and get some rubber and you will notice if you watched the last episode that I have tweaked the layout a tiny bit. So I've uh, got rid of the generator over here, and we're going to be showing you like uh, the the updated system behind the wall in a minute. And it's still the same. You still got your macerator here. It still pumps, gets things from here, and it pumps them out here. And this is this is the next room that I'll be showing you in a second. But first of all, we need to set up this battery box. Now, as you can see here, I've moved the moved the um, what, when I can think of the word generator to 
back here, so it's out of the way, and you, you don't want wires everywhere, so you want to like create like a little back room, or up in the ceiling, or somewhere. But uh, you can see I've got wires going, all my machines going through the back of the wall, so it's nice, nice and tidy, and you won't see them. Now, you want to put the battery box either touching like this, or one block up, and attach it with a cable. But just, just for simpleness' sake, I'm just going to stick it on top, and it works just as well. The energy gets transferred from here, into here. And you can see the power level will raise. And it outputs a 32 EU current, which is which is probably I think it's the lowest the lowest current that you can send out. Alright, so you can see and it'll hold 40,000 charge, which is quite a lot. But you see it, one of the sides has a little a little circle in it. Now this is where the output comes from. And as you get things like transformers, which we'll go on to in a bit later they have multiple little divots on the outside, so you can send output from many sides. So in theory what we could do is I could put a generator here and here and one on top and then have vast amounts of energy coming out the front this way. But we don't want that in this, so what you do is you get your wrench and you find the side, I'll just fly for this because it's easier, you find the side that you want your output to come out of and you just right click and it moves the little circle to, the, to that side that you've clicked. And if you click it again, it will it will smash. Uh, that, and that's what happens uh, with generators and things. They'll just smash instantly. So if I put this back and put that up there, and I don't have a cable. Brilliant. No, there we go. Cable. Now, as you'll see, you'll hear in a second that my macerator just fly over very quickly. Will start producing now. It'll start going. Before it wasn't. It was just wasn't working at all. And the same goes for all these other machines when we get them running. Now the problem with this setup is that the longer your cables are, the less the, the lose energy along the way. So we can get over that problem later on with upgrading our wires. There's things like uh, fiberglass wires which are pretty much just fiber optics and it just travels super fast. So the next thing we want to make, well we've already made it, is put the electric furnace down. Now the electric furnace is super fast so what we want to do is we want to pump some of this dust out here. One dust. There we go. This is this is all the dust that I've got stocked up so far with iron, etc. And this this has the same problem as when you pump out things from a chest into the macerator. If it's if it's full, then it won't fit in. But later on, you get furnaces which can hold multiple things, and they'll just uh, cook them through. And then, oh, and it's going into the wrong side. Oh, this is a bad foresight. One second. I'm in fact an idiot, and I forgot that putting things in the side will put it in the output. So we'll start again. I've just I've just made the wire a bit bigger and go in the top. So uh, do I have any on me? No. Right, so I'll just one of these just to show you. Now, if you look how fast this cooks, look how fast that is. That is insanely quick. Boom, done. And there you go, iron ingot. Wonderful. Then we can set this off. Like so. And out comes iron ingot into the chest. Now, this this next slot is for the extractor. This is the extractor, and that's the compressor. They all look the same. Extractor. Now, for example, if we get some rubber wood. Uh, let's see, rubber wood, there we go. If I just whack some of this rubber wood in here, like so, three blocks. Now this takes ages. It is probably one of the longest taking machines in the world. Although it's not that long. I've, I've always, you know, when I'm sitting there waiting for something, you're impatient. It takes forever. But in hindsight, it's not that bad. And as you can see, rubber wood instantly turns into a block of rubber. Which is very handy. You can extract other things like... Um, you can I think you can get seeds, seeds from something. Uh, but it's, it's just handy mainly for the rubber, and pretty much that's it really. And the compressor. Now the compressor, similar thing. It's used for creating uranium bars, which are used in nuclear bombs and such. And let's turn the volume down. It's getting very loud in here. There we go. 
and you can compress things called plant balls. So if I just quickly grab a crafting table and say some some leaves, you can. Oh, I won't, I won't use leaves. I'll use say saplings. Every, everyone can have saplings, and I'll get a stack of them. So I'm like this. Oh, always rains. Always rains when I'm recording. It's like the most rainy place in the world right now. To create a plant ball, you can just things like that in a, in a chest shape, but with like any vegetation, works with seeds, uh, vines, leaves, saplings, whatever. With your plant ball, whack this in the compressor, like so, and it will compress it into compressed plant balls. Now, this, is, this is pretty much what you can use it for at this stage in, in development. Uh, until later when you have to compress metal ingots into compressed metal ingots and uranium into compressed uranium it's pretty much useless and you get a compressed plant ball and eventually after loads and loads of faffing around and canning machines and things you can compress this into fuel and you can make biofuel with it but if I get a uranium a uranium Let's see. Alright, uh, just put a blob of uranium in there. It will eventually turn into one of these refined uraniums. And then you can make nuclear bombs with it. So, I mean, if you've got it lying around and you find some uranium on the floor, you can compress it. Or you can save it for equivalent exchange later on. That's, up, that's completely up to you. So, there you go. Refined uranium. So, I hope you've... Hope you've learned something this episode, and I hope you'll keep on watching and enjoying the videos. So thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time guys, see you later.